Good morning, fam. Welcome back to another episode of Benji's Logs and Whatnot. We are back at it again for a glorious Monday morning. And I tell you what, that uh, that sky out there is looking mighty fine. It does still look pretty cloudy and the city is barely visible, as it were. But it's not raining as we speak, which is bloody good. It has given the gardens a very good drink. And as you would have seen this morning, the uh, plants are growing beautifully. Uh, I did have a check on that little fella that was like that big yeah, uh, from a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. Uh, grubs and all the other bits and pieces of wildlife has decided to come and get him. Not only that, guys, we are going to have an opportunity to get that bag up on the bed at some time this week and going to pull it apart and see what we need in that bag and what we can take out. Uh, I was kind of hoping when we were up at Super Cheap last weekend we could find another little spool of the uh, that little thin rope that we've got so that can um, minimise the amount of space that it is taking. I do regret severely pulling all that rope off the off the spool as I did. It, uh, it's just made a mess and it's taken up a bit of space. So it's a lesson learned in this situation. So uh, we'll just have to live with it for the time being. Either way guys, it's going to get done in the next 24 hours either way. Uh, probably get it done tonight because honestly I'm a bit bored sitting on the computer doing diddly squat so we can uh, we can pull it apart tonight I reckon. would be a good time to do it. Uh, I've got some tubs in my room that I can put some stuff in that we don't need in the bag as it were. So at least that way we can at least find the other stuff if and when we do need it for future camping trips. So for now guys, I'm gonna go to work and we'll see you guys later on tonight. Alrighty, we have made it home for this Monday afternoon and I must admit, Guys, it is relatively warm in this house. I'm literally sweating bullets as we speak. So I am going to uh, get a lot of things open and turned on so that we can cool down a little bit. Okay, that's gonna spin up in a second. That's cool. All right, so as we have suggested in the past, guys, I'm gonna pull this bag apart and put things that we don't really need aside I do have a problem with hoarding way too much stuff that we don't potentially need for any purpose at any given time. There's a few things that we'll definitely be keeping in the bag nonetheless. So as you guys remember from the last episode, we've got a couple of fire steels. We've got two of them. Can never have too many of those. We've also got a particular shovel from Fowler. Uh, you will find a description on my channel if you go into the main profile. You'll see here, um, Fella amongst the other known YouTubers that I do thoroughly enjoy. I also have a wee little axe known as a Viking axe. Good for like little stuff, make kindling, um, t take little branches off like uh, tree branches and so on and so forth. So those two are definitely going to stay in the bag. Ah uh, yes. This here is like a little survival satchel. Again from Fiala. I'll pull that apart in just a moment. Which will remind me. I'll put it just there so we can uh, get it done. Another little piece that we've got is a hammock. That's uh, one of two hammocks that I've got that is rated for about 150 kilos. So it will hold me only just. Uh, that does have a um, net over it as well. So that'll be going over there, potentially up amongst all the other stuff that we got up there. So that is adding extra weight that we don't need. So I'm gonna open up the front pocket and as you can see, we've got the traps that we did last weekend or the weekend before. So we'll definitely keep these in the very pocket. We also got lighters and matches in a little Ziploc bag so that they don't get overly too wet or buggered. It's always a good idea to keep your lighting stuff 
uh, well and truly dry in a zip locker bag like so. So we've also got a couple of these Spartan Fire again from Fowler. I do love shopping on his thing for any form of survival product. And this is basically what it's used for. Uh, pause it if you wish to read up on that. So that's basically some of the uses of such a thing. They are little like wax things that you can start up with your fire steel, which are obviously there. As you guys remember from the last time, all this twine, or well not twine, but uh, paracord as we like to call it. Definitely going to keep that in the bag, considering it is taking up a few inches of valuable space. Got also some of these windproof matches, which I've uh, bought off another bushcraft thing that I saw on TA Outdoors. And I was using these a couple of episodes back, or more than that now, because it's been a while since I've watched him. So they're also good to have as well. I also like carrying a couple of cans of Aragard with 40% um, DEET. So this is heavy duty, this is the highest you can get in strength. So it's good for mozzies I believe, just mozzies. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's good repellent for some things, not all things. I do prefer to use another particular brand called the Bushman. Uh, it does a whole range more, which is out the back, which I'll have to go and grab in just a moment. So. We do have another silver little box here, which if we can get open with one hand without spilling stuff, we'd be cheering. Ah, uh, yes. So what we've got here is a little sewing kit. Always good to have to, um, you know, uh, patch up pants, shirts, whatever. It's got buttons. It's got these different twines, um, safety pins. Um, buttons I'm not sure what that is but it's uh, to be used for anything you really could desire and I'm not even sure what this silver thing is oh yeah it's kind of like a magnifying glass yeah, magnifying glass fancy bloody that that would also be good for uh, starting fires as well, if it's got enough sun to channel the light through. We also got an emergency blanket just in case we need to uh, make ourselves a little bit more visible in a form of an emergency, of course. Uh, as I was saying before guys, this is the brand of mozzie repellent that we prefer. It does have 20% DEET with sunscreen, so you probably have to rub it in. So it's good for mosquitoes, sand flies, flies, ticks and leeches. So this is the stuff that I much well prefer to have, but I do have Aragard as well. So I'm not gonna be out of that. Also I got a little towel, a little collapsible towel, which is good for drying yourself off if you get wet for any reason. Oh, and I also got this funky looking device. It is a um, thermosol, so it runs on these little tanks. So that's a tank of propane and it comes with these little blue pads, as you can see in the front of that. So it basically has a flame within the back of that to heat up that pad so that uh, it keeps away the mosquitoes. But the problem is they only last about four hours, but the containers within the back, which you can just see, the fluid rumbling around there a little bit that lasts about 12 so if you can keep up with changing the things around you should be pretty right but all in all I prefer to use those at the best of times but that right there could be used as a last resort so a few more of these things we've got a little knife sharpener right there we've got both coarse and smooth I can't remember which one it is with, but I think that one there, I'm not quite sure, but that's good for sharpening knives. It's also got, uh, it's hard to do it with one hand, sorry guys. It's also got a little 
thing like that. So if you've got um, like a saw on the knife, you can just use that to uh, sharpen up, or even use it for a sharpening up the saw itself. Um, so that's one of the two. We also got this one here as well. Very similar thing. It's got the saw sharpener there. It's got the coarse and fine sides of things. So that's the fine. That's the coarse. It's also got itself a little fire striker in there as well. So that's handy to have. A little fire striker and the thing to do the deed with. So as per the usual we've got a compass just in case for any situation where we need to find it north and everything else in between. We don't carry maps but we should carry them up especially with that. We also have a fire straw so basically what you do you, you can um, uh, it's not going to work for me I need both hands for it. So this basically comes out makes a, probably a metre long straw and you can basically blow in the big end to come out the little end and basically it helps bring life to a fire. So definitely good thing to have and finally We've got a little sharpening stone. So again, we've got one side is coarse, the other side is fine. But we haven't really used that for anything as of yet, because there's not really much point at this given time to use it for anything. But uh, that's basically the front pockets at this time. So we're also gonna put a pair of gloves in there as well. So we've basically got these um, jigging gloves. They're basically leather. They're only a couple of mil thick, but they will help with whenever you're dealing with wood. You always want to protect your hands and eyes whenever you're doing wood. But also to help get hands and that off the fire as well. That will help stop the hands burning for a few seconds. So you can just pick it up, put it aside. So they will come in handy at a later time down the track. I can guarantee you that right now. Alrighty, let's have a look at what we got in the main compartment. Do you have <clears throat> sleeping bag that's rated for about four degrees Celsius, so plus four degrees Celsius. Um, I'll put the conversion up on the screen for you guys <clears throat> because I'm not really that good at uh, knowing the difference at this time. Another little thing that we've got is a three meter by three meter cameo tarp, so 300 by 290, so it's roughly about a three by three. So I always find carrying one of these is handy to have in the tile, in the bag at any given time just in case that you need a quick shelter. <clears throat> Most important thing of all is to always carry a first aid kit around with you. This is the biggest one I could have got at a certain hardware store or a tool shop. They do sell quite a few different uh, sized kits but that's the biggest one, especially the one that I was looking for. I do have another one in the car. so. I'll get to that at a later time. <clears throat> also got another tarp right here. The Blue Stone is the company that you can go and have a look at this. This again is about a 3x3 three three or a 3x375 three three uh, centimeter tarp. And that right there as you can tell is massive compared to the other little one that we've got sitting right there. So. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I'll be having this one more so in the bag than that big heavy thing. That would probably be just good for having in the car. That uh, gives you a little bit extra cover for when you need it. Another little thing that we've got though guys is a Tinder bag. Oh, this is actually my favourite piece of um, stuff that we've got is the Tinder bag. Let's have a quick gander what we've got in here. Mm, sounds like someone's in trouble. That's going up the road behind us. Sounds like the fire is going up that direction. But anyways, getting sidetracked. So we've got some other pieces of fire starting kit here. So we've got some fat rope that's full of kerosene. Oh yeah. We've also got some birch bark in here as well very resinous stuff as it were that stuff does last quite a bit of time as it were 
So I've got Vern's Flint and Steel print Primitive Steel Fire Starting Kits. So I'll uh, let you guys have a bit of a gander at that. So that you guys can go and have a gander at their side if you will. So what's basically inside this? If we can open it up. So I've got some of this rope. We've got a big piece of uh, flint. We've got look, some more birch bark in there. Smaller piece of uh, flint. We've got the steel that uh, you basically strike. So you basically hold it like that. And you just go bang, bang, bang. And basically that will cause a bit of um, bit of spark into whatever you're hiding, holding underneath it. So whether it's a bit of cloth, whatever, it'll basically go up. Another little piece that we've also got, guys, is a little three-piece uh, cooking set. So it's basically two pans and a little frying pan. <clears throat> does have something within it to help with certain gas canisters that we've got sitting on the base of the care uh, bag so that we can at least cook things if need be if we can't have fires <clears throat> so basically we've got this little common gas stove top and basically it's got three little flat pieces that pan out like that like a little star just like so so we can just put pots pans whatever else that we have on hand uh, they also do go on top of these style of <clears throat> fuel cylinders I do have three of these so I've got this big one which is about half full and then I've got two half sized ones of these fit in the base of here as well so two little half sized ones like those they're good to have at the very base of your camping bag because you don't want to have a lot of stuff on the top so <clears throat> everyone has things laid out a lot differently to this um, this is just the way that I've got it set up at this given time so this does have a back pocket in the back as you can see it's got some stuff here as well so I do carry a blue tarp like that it's about one meter by three meter so that would be good for like a floor um, floor tarp so that you can sort of stop so much cold and so much heat losing through the floor we've also got a few more bits and pieces in here by the looks of it ah yes this bad boy this is good for cooking up or chopping up stuff it is supposedly a blacksmith uh, knife blade so it is good for obviously chopping stuff up as you can see so we're not going to have that bad boy out as far as it is what else do we have I've got more more of this stuff uh, can't have too much I've also got some heavy duty uh, steel pegs well not heavy duty but they'll do the job for a majority of what we will be needing them for so and the final piece inside the bag is in fact if we can get it out a grill which is heavily bent at this point but that's alright this is just to mainly go over the fire to stop your steak or whatever you've got uh, from falling in the fire but a lot of people do like putting it directly on the coals um, but sometimes like they like to keep it up so I do have this little bad boy right here which I'm gonna try and straighten up before we put it back in the bag so we're down to the final two pockets guys uh, we do have two side pockets and this one here we've got two of these life straws definitely something to have especially if you're out bush you can't boil up water it's always good to have those life straws sit in your bag also have a little one litre bee free um, contaminant bag as well so you can just fill that up with water for one litre suck it through the straw and you basically be fine and you can find these on the internet so the brand is that is bee free 
So you can probably find that on um, any eBay thing. Actually, that must be the name of it there, Katadin. Uh, probably not even saying it right, but anyway, this can help you in any situation, whether you're driving, camping, or whatever. Handy to have. I, I bought it and never used it, so it's always good to have in in your bag either way to help you out, especially with the live straws as well. Always good to have those in the bag. And then the final pocket, guys, right here. I do have some things that I'm not going to pull out of that because of potential guidelines. But we've also got a collapsible saw. Now basically, this is called a Fisher saw. You can buy this at your normal hardware store. Very handy to have, especially if you're trying to cut down trees or dead trees to make a fire shelter, whatever. Um, see if I can get the open. I'll just put you guys down there for just a second to apologize, guys. There we go. So basically, that's what it looks like. And that's how gnarly the teeth look on that. So that can definitely do what you need. And especially damage your hands if you're not uh, paying much attention. That's where those rigger gloves will come in handy as well. If you slip, it'll take a massive chunk out of the gloves and sit of your hand first. So at least that way you can uh, protect your hands for whatever you're doing. Uh, wood stuff, uh, it's always good to, good practice to have safety as your number one priority because if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you hurt yourself, yeah, basically no one's going to come and save your backside if uh, no one knows where you are. It's also good practice to have your first aid kit up the very top of your bag just in case something does happen you can grab it and that little first, um, not first aid, that little silver box that we saw in the front here with the sewing kit could also be used for um, uh, say if you got a cut on your arm that's pretty deep or on your leg or somewhere on your body if you can reach it you can potentially use that sewing kit as something to help stitch yourself back up. You know, so far we've only pulled out two pieces of equipment out of this bag. That is the oversized tarp and the um, hammock with the uh, mozzie net over it. So I did have a blow up pillow in this bag somewhere. It's probably in the car from the last time we went camping somewhere. Probably in the back of the seat or under the seat somewhere. I'll have to go and uh, go and find it because I definitely know it's in there. Um, that's definitely something else to carry with as well. Is a blow-up pillow, just basic pillow, to support one's neck and head, so that you don't get a bit of a kink and you're walking around. Uh, got a kink in the neck. <laughs> don't want that. Definitely not. So I ended up finding the little blow-up bag or not bag but blow up pillow in the car it was underneath the driver's seat for when we did that uh, very cold 23 hours down at the uh, Pikes Creek Reservoir so I don't, the, these usually do come with a repair kit like a little patch and some glue I don't know what I've done with it it's possibly long gone in the bin trash so always got to be careful of that uh, it's always good to keep the repair kits for all of these sorts of things otherwise you're just basically going to pop a pop a thing and that's basically it for that. Another good little habit to get into is if you don't want to rough it too much one of these bad boys that's right it's a dunny, dunny roll and also if you don't have any or if you're allergic to the sprays as well you can always use uh, Mortine coils that are good for mosquito mosquitoes, good for about 12 hours per thing, good for a 20 meter square area. So I've used these out camping and they do wonders, absolute wonders. They do keep the mozzies away, which is exactly what you want. Don't want those little blood suckers sitting around the camp and giving you a hard time with uh, whatever they've got planned for you. So it's always good to have, if you can, just take one of those as well, if you're allergic to the spray. <clears throat> Um, with these as well, dunny papers, it's always good to put those in Ziploc bags as well, uh, 
just a little friendly tip if you ever go camping and you need to take some dunny paper, Ziploc bag. It'll keep it nice and dry if it gets torrential downpour out wherever you may be. And it's the same with any other piece of equipment that you've got, such as cameras that aren't waterproof. It's always good to put them in like a little container or a Ziploc bag to keep them well and truly dry. It's also the same with battery packs. I usually carry something like this around as well. That's not really waterproof. Uh, so put that in like a little uh, bag as well. Don't want your batteries ruined for any of your cameras. Alright, so for the last couple of minutes guys, I'm going to show you one more little piece of equipment that we've got. A little bag of goodies that we got from Fowlers. It is a waterproof bag, so I don't need to worry too much about putting this one in a uh, individual bag itself. So this comes with a little teeny weeny uh, Gerber um, multi-tool. It's a teeny weeny little thing, it's so cute, look at it. Look at it guys, so ruddy cute. So this does come with all the little appendages, uh, a knife, little saw, file, everything else that you need, including the little ball opener right there. That is absolutely awesome. I love that little tool in itself. Again, another little sewing kit with two spindles of yarn or thread and a couple of needles, a couple of safety pins. Again, you can use that to you know, stitch yourself up if you've got a scar or um, patching up your uniform. Got a little bit of cordage as well. It's a little bit thicker as well. So that could come in handy to tie some things down. You could also use that as um, trapping rope. It's got some of this little um, gold um, steel wire thing mesh stuff. It's also got a couple of things in the back. So that's some of that um, wax stuff that we saw before. Also got a little bit of the um, floss. So floss your teeth if you want. You can even use it for our fish online if need be. It also comes with these little cards. So I got one of these cards. Comes with a knife, comes with a spear, comes with a couple of little hooks. It also comes with a couple of little um, trap triggers as well. So you can find all of this on Fowler's um, uh, website, which I'll see if I can find a link to that. I've also got a couple of stuff that I leave in my um, leave in my wallet as well. So you've also got these ones as well. So you've got some hooks, a lure, a little knife, a little like um, splinter digger right there. Um, little bits of lures that you can put on there uh, to catch some fish if you wish. And uh, it looks like a couple of um, threading needles there as well. So that's always comes in handy. So I do have two of those in my wallet. And it's always handy to have just in case you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Final, second final piece is this little funny, funky looking thing as it's like a little flint reel wheel so it basically does that so if you don't have the steel you got that little thing boom do a little uh, a little ring on that one and the final piece is this little tube with some hooks in it that's uh, some dried maggots by the looks of that or some form of dry bait that you can use whilst out in the middle of nowhere that's also a good little thing to have in like the car or something just in case you break down in the bush somewhere and you've got at least something to use for um, that sort of thing all in all guys I think I have made it just that little bit lighter for us to carry uh, also if you need charging stations you can always carry a um, little thing like that on the very back of the bag somewhere so it doesn't get too badly damaged as long as the cameras that you've got are rechargeable as well uh, that's also a good thing to have 
for any form of charging cameras, batteries and so on and so forth. So I could probably still do some modifications to the bag itself. Probably don't need to carry as much crap within the bag. I can probably try and consolidate a lot of the smaller stuff into one bag, uh, bag pocket, so that we can uh, at least find a lot of the majority of the stuff. Uh, the biggest stuff you want to try, always try and have on your back, because it uh, just makes it a little bit easier to carry down the track. Because uh, heavy stuff right on the outside of the bag will make you start doing this, make you fall back. That's something that you don't want. It's a little something that I've learned. So that is basically it guys, that's what we've got in the bag. Uh, it's basically a work in progress at this given time. I have collected a lot of that stuff over a few years, so it's not just something that you can uh, collect overnight. But then if you do have the cash, money, whatever, you can, uh, well, yeah, you can um, basically get a majority of the stuff in one night if need be. But it will come in staggered or on the one day, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's just something that I've been collecting over the years for hopefully future videos for something that we do actually love more than anything. It's just we haven't really had the courage to get out there. Not only that, we're not the fittest person in the world, so it, um, it has been pretty hard to get out there and do these sorts of videos. But I'm not going to make this channel about camping outdoors. It's just something that I'm going to add to the uh, already busy schedule with YouTube. Um, it will be something in the near future that I'm hoping to do. Even if I'm not far from the car, it's always good to have um, that sort of thing to practice with uh, for whatever reasons and so on and so forth. But anyways guys, I'm going to leave it at that. I've been blabbering on for too long. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for being a part of this one. Thanks for coming along and having a gander at what we've got. And hopefully it's been somewhat educational to a degree. Um, but until the next time guys, keep it easy.